Oh, you have done it? Yeah. Allah Mustan. <clears throat> yeah, th those, um, those gatherings, I understand why people do them. I, you know, like I said, I've never seen it done except here. Uh, and I, it makes sense. You know, you know, we're all the way in Moss Park. Uh, it's like a 45 minute drive for some people. And then some people, they're, they're slaughtering like, like out in Ocala. You know, how long would it take them to get from A to B? Uh, it's, I understand it makes sense. However, um, <clears throat> it causes division. It causes division. Just like the, uh, the Eid Orlando. That Eid Orlando, y'all have heard of that? Yeah. yeah. Um, while they try to make like, it's the, it's the jama'ah because of the number, the sheer number of people that show up. They try to make like this is the jama'ah of the Muslimin, and which is definitely not the case. Because the way that started was uh, there was a, as a doctor or two out of Jama'ah Masjid. And they had the idea that they wanted to do uh, the Eid inside with air conditioning and put on like the carnival type of festivities and all that that you see. Like this was their idea that they pitched to Imam Tariq. And Imam Tariq uh, turned them down and said, we're not, we're not doing that. And so uh, they pitched the idea to a number of masajid, and those masajid also turned them down. Um, I know because we were pitched, Masjid Sunnah was pitched, uh, the idea to basically get on board with, with them. And uh, I turned them down. And so uh, <coughs> they went ahead and did it anyway. They went ahead and did it anyway uh, to the point where uh, they, they even collect Zakat al-Fitr. They even started collecting Zakat al-Fitr on behalf of the community. Um, and the question becomes who has designated them uh, to hold that position and, you know, and all of that. So this Eid that they have, while it may have huge numbers, what it actually did but just it created like if there are eight if there were eight Eid Salats because they they said one of the things that they pitched was let's unite the Muslims, right? That was, that was their that was their thing. Um, but what in reality what it did was if there uh, were eight Eid Salats, they just became the ninth, right? So there was no uh, there was no unity. Uh, people didn't come together. And all it did was it, it divided up the resources of the Muslims even more than it was already divided. Now, I take issue myself personally with there being so many masjids holding different Eid Salats to begin with. Right? Each masjid having its own Eid Salat, I, I take issue with that. And I do agree that the Muslims should come together and unite and have... Uh, you know, one spot, one major spot where we all come together and pray the Eid together. I, I, would, I would fully support that. Uh, however, um, we understand the differences in the masajid and the different methodologies that uh, make it problematic for us to really, you know, make something like that happen. Uh, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite the Muslims. Um, so with that being the case... Like what about some group of people that just come up and, and they say, you know what, let's, let's make an Eid. Like for example, you have land, right? In the back, how much land? Don't you have like 10 acres or 20 acres? or so? What, How many acres is that? Uh, 18? 18 acres. Is that not enough land to, to hold Eid Salat, bring our sheep and slaughter? Right? You could do that if you wanted to, right? And then it's easy, right? You know, the sheikh, his, 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 you know, he has his garage in the front yard. They eat salat in the backyard. Everything is easy and convenient, right? Uh, but, you know, the, the issue is not about convenience. The issue is about unity uh, and not dividing the Muslims. You know, during uh, the time of the Salaf, uh, the word Masjid al jamir you know, that came from was, you know, al jamir means the, the masjid that, you know, that gathers the people. 
because they close all the little masjids, right? And then there's only one, the one big masjid is where everybody goes for Jumu'ah. And then for the five daily salat, you have the different masajid in the neighborhood where people pray their five daily prayers. But on Friday, all those masajid, they don't, they don't hold Jumu'ah. They're closed. And everybody goes to what they call al-masjid al-jami' where uh, the imam comes, meaning the leader, he comes and he delivers the khutbah. And this unites the people. Uh, until now, we have, you know, every single musalla is, is holding Jumu'ah. Uh, and it, and it, it divides the Muslims. It splits the Muslims. It divides up our resources. Um, you know, every single masjid, you know, that I know of has a fundraiser. For example, every year, sometimes two, three times a year, every masjid is begging for money, begging for money, please, we need to keep the lights on, please, we need to add another room to the masjid, please, we need to hire imam, please, we need books. Um, but the reality of the matter is that the Muslims aren't poor. The Muslims are not poor. We, we don't, we're not struggling as far as money is concerned because alhamdulillah, the Muslims have money, they have wealth. What's the problem then? The problem is that our resources are divided. Our resources are divided and, and split up into so many smaller groups that it causes problems uh, and each group has, has struggles to maintain its own self. Uh, and we feel it. Uh, even when, you know, when the Eid Orlando, for example, when that happened, I saw our numbers decrease dramatically. People that I knew who would attend the Salat with us uh, who said <coughs> who said that they were going to pray with us? We talked about it, right? But then on the day of Eid, uh, yeah, I didn't see you at the Eid. Where were you? Oh, you know, we 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 stopped by Eid Orlando. You know, uh, we wanted to just check it out. The next year, okay, you checked it out last year. You saw what was going on. What, what's the deal now? Oh, you know, they, you know, my kids, my kids. Uh, and so what ends up happening is, you know, Masjid Noor, you know, we have. 50 brothers from over 50 families from Masjid Noor, they go to Eid Orlando. 50 families from Masjid Sunnah, they go to Eid Orlando. You have 50 families from Jama'a Masjid, they go over there. And then what happens is the resources start to, uh, you know, start to become less and less and less. And it hurts the Jama'a. It hurts the Jama'a. Um, and so uh, we should be supporting our leadership uh, with... Uh, their decision making, uh, even though we disagree, we may disagree with their decisions. Um, <clears throat> if if at any time we disagree with the decisions of our leadership, then instead of breaking off and starting a new group, then you should get involved. You know, find out why. You know, the the leaders make the decisions the way they did. Get involved. No one's going to stop you from getting involved. Uh, <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, uh, if you want to get involved and volunteer, uh, then get involved and volunteer. Then you'll be privy to information and you'll see, uh, you'll see the community in a different light, I guarantee you. You know, if you want to be responsible, right? So for example, let's say, okay, for Zen, you have a problem with the type of toilet paper that we've decided to buy for the masjid. Okay, from now on, we're going to make you in charge of the bathroom. All right? You're in charge of the bathroom now. You're responsible for everything in the bathroom. I guarantee you, now that you have this new responsibility, you're going to see things differently. Now when you, when you say, listen, uh, we, need a new, we need a new mop for the bathroom. We say, okay, look, here, check out the finances so that you, you tell me where you, you, know, you get the money for the mop. Then you start to see things like, oh, wow, we can't afford a new mop. Okay? You know, that, that, this toilet paper, you, you go in, the first, the first thing you're going to do, you grab all the toilet paper off the shelf, and now we're getting rid of this. We want some, you know, we want some Charmin up in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? We want the Charmin, you know, the stuff, the good stuff. And you say, okay, how much does it cost? Oh, wow, that's, that's, that's a little bit of money. Say, okay, no problem, we're going we're gonna to get the brothers, they're going to they're gonna spend the money, so you come around, you talk to Abu Anus, you go to Abu Tariq, and Abu Tariq says, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with the Tariq paper we have now, I'm not giving no money for that. 
And one is like, I got toilet paper at home. I don't even use the bathroom here, so I'm not giving no money for that. Right? And then now you stuck. You stuck and you start to see the struggles of what it means to be in charge and be responsible. And, 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 the, and you start to understand why some of the decisions are, that are made are made in the way that they're made. Because it's not, you know, you, you know when, you, when you're sitting down, you know, we come to the masjid, you pray and you leave, it's easy to criticize. Uh, it's easy, for example, to say, oh, why are we having the eat in Moss Park? It's far, the stat is hot. Why are we doing that? We should do it close. Well, so, okay, no problem. We're going to make you in charge of finding the place where we're going to pray Salat al Eid. You're in charge now. Then when you go and you find out that there is no place closer, then you're going to come back to us and say, you know what? I think Moss Park is okay. We're going to, we're going to do it there. Right? And so the thing is, you know, it's easy to criticize when you're sitting from a place of privilege. The place of privilege is when you're not responsible. And so it's easy to come up and, and criticize the leaders with, with the Eid Salat. What, why do we have to wait so long? Why is it 845? Why, do we, you know, why can't we do it at 8 o'clock? Don't they know that people have to go to work? People want to slaughter. People want to this, that, and the third. And, and we say, okay, we're going to make an Eid committee, and you're in charge. Once you now have that responsibility, you're now going to see why it's so difficult to make decisions. And you'll learn some respect for the decisions that have been made by the people who've been making these decisions for the last 10 years, the last 15 years, day in and day out. They're making these tough decisions and they're carrying them on their shoulders, carrying the, you know, listening to the complaints of the people, being beat up with the, the, by the tongue, the people beating them up with their words. You're this, you're that, you're inconsiderate, this, that. Uh, and they eat, you know, they just bear it. And they, they say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry every year. I apologize, I apologize. And <clears throat> year in and year out, they're still making the tough decisions. Um, it, you know, we should be supportive of our leadership and supportive of the community and not uh, be quick to make decisions that are going to tear down the very institutions that uh, we have built. Because as I said, it's easy. I can open my garage and, you know, and have... Uh, and have a, 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 a Salat al-Eid, I could do that. That's easy. Like I said, I, I, you know, I could guarantee I could probably get 20 people, maybe 30. I, I could get Abu Tariq to come, right? Is this the topic? I don't want you to say, I am making the <laughs> No, no. I, <laughs> I, I brought it up because, you know, uh, I, I felt... Like I said, after the, after the Jumu'ah, I, I didn't, because like I said, I didn't, I, I intended to say it, and it kind of be like a side point, and I, and I move on. Uh, but the, what, what ended up happening was, when it came out, uh, I, I realized that I felt a little bit more passionate uh, about the issue than, uh, than what I thought I did. And so I started saying things that um, I was hoping that, you know, people... Uh, wasn't they didn't take offense uh, like I said I'm not apologizing for what was said or the the, the content because I believe in and I, I would say it again uh, it's it's just the delivery that may have been a little bit um, may have been a little bit rough uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but it's, it is it's an important topic the issue of of just unity uh, altogether um, I, I see a problem with the Muslims dividing their resources. And I'm going to say, make use this last example, and inshallah we'll move on so we can finish out our topic on the udhiyah. Uh, let's take uh, the iftar in Ramadan, right? The dinner. Okay? On a Saturday, how much, how much do we pay? How much would a person pay on this, like on a Saturday? A thousand dollars. Okay, a thousand dollars. Tayyip. So let's say, Farzan, you and your dad, y'all split the y'all split it fifty fifty. You pay you pay five hundred, he pays five hundred. You got five hundred dollars just laying around. Maybe I mean maybe you might be rich, I'm just saying, but a lot of us I don't have five hundred dollars just you know just sitting around and I'm not doing nothing with, right? So in order for me to come up with that thousand dollars, six hundred dollars or whatever. Like I have to sacrifice for that, right? I have to, 
You know, I have to cut corners. I have to tell my children no. I have to tell my wife no for a couple of months. We have to cut back on electricity, on water. Maybe we're not going out to the, you know, we're not going to go out to the, you know, to do the, you know, some of the activities that we're doing so that we can sacrifice, so that we can feed the people, right? Now, you've done all this sacrificing. This is, this is where the community meets here in the masjid, and you took your part, you did your part, and you sacrificed to feed the Muslims. So, but what do I do on the day that you have decided to sacrifice and put up the thousand dollars? I call people to my house. Right? I invite people to my house for a personal dinner. Not the community. Not the community. No, 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 no. Abuenas. Hey, Abuenas, listen, uh, I'm having dinner at my house on Saturday. I want you to come. Bring your family. Shh, don't tell nobody. Right? Abdul Hadi, Jasim, right? Then y'all show up at the masjid because how many people we have? Like 200 people, 250, right? 250 people on a Saturday. Now all of a sudden, there's too much food that y'all brought because now it's only 150 people. Where's the other 100 people at? They're at my house. And so why would I do that? Why would I do that? Why would I call people away from the community Right, a known community event where I knew that this is what was happening. I knew this is what the community agreed upon. I knew that this is what was going on. I knew that people were sacrificing in order to make that event happen. And then I come with a competing event, meaning I'm doing the same thing. Right, I'm doing the same thing. Now, if I was doing something different, like giving out, uh, you know, for example, if I was doing uh, a different type of event. A different type of thing. Maybe I was giving, a, 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 a giving out free uh, blood tests. I was taking people's blood and doing, I was checking for cholesterol, or for example. That's a whole different issue. That's, I'm saying, but I'm, I'm doing the same exact thing. The same exact thing. I'm calling people away from the community to do the same exact thing, but I want to do it personal and have it in my house. What that does is it diminishes and it weakens the community and, 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 the, the, and, and the sacrifice that the brothers made, it can, and if they find out, if they found out, if Farzan found out that I intentionally had a competing event on the same day, he's going to feel it some kind of way. Now, he might not say nothing. He's a nice brother. He might, you know, he, he's not so going to say anything, but that may make him feel something because the next time that we approach him, say, listen, can you, you know, the next year, can you sponsor a night? You might say, no, I'm not doing that. Uh, I don't have it. He could have had it if he wasn't burned the last time that he sacrificed. He might sacrifice again. But because of how, we dealt with, how I dealt with the situation, right, it could cause him to say, you know, I don't want to do that. And so these, these acts of, of uh, we have to see, we have to, you know, take a look at, what we're doing and, and, and see the reality of some of the effects that we have on you know, what we do and the decisions that we make and how we have to look past just, oh, I want to have uh, a social, I want to have a social dinner at my house. Oh, it's just a bunch of my friends. Are you saying it's haram for me to have people over my house and feed them food? Are you saying that? I, I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, why don't you consider what you're doing and the effects that it has on the people that are in your community. That's what I'm saying. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So let's get started, inshallah. Uh, na na Is there Uh, mashallah. Uh, Jasim's point that he's making, uh, for those like on the internet that can't hear the comments, is when we look at the hukum of Salat al Eid, 
right, we look at the hukum, the ruling of Salat al-Eid, and we look at the ruling of the Udhiyah itself. Last week we talked about the ruling of the Udhiyah. Who remembers what we decided uh, as the ruling of the Udhiyah? It's recommended, right, because of the hadith, وَأَرَادَ أَحَدُكُمْ Right? Um, so, but the, the, the hukum of Salat al-Eid is, is, is wujub. It's either wajib al ayn or wajib al kifaya and some even said sunnah al um, But what seems to be most correct is that the Eid Salah is wajib. Ya imma ala al ayn wa ya imma ala al kifaya. So, uh, why would we prefer and give preference to that which is sunnah and do something that is wrong in order to implement something that is sunnah and going away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made wajib uh, is, is Allah azza wa jal and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has declared the salat in of itself as a, as, a, as a higher status or higher station in Islam because of the obligation of the Eid salat and as it relates to the slaughter then it's not, it's not it does not take that uh, it does not take an obligation, rather it is uh, recommended. So why would we accommodate a recommendation to leave off an obligation? I think that was the point that uh, the brother was making. Jazakum Allah khairah. Naam, Jazakumullah khairan. Actually, we're going to get to that, inshallah. We need to get started. Uh, <coughs> so, inshallah ta'ala, this evening we're going to uh, continue in our uh, classes, uh, our second class on the Udhiyah. Inshallah ta'ala, this will be the final uh, discussion that we have on it. And tonight we're going to begin with the Uyub, the, uh, the, the uh, deficiencies that render your animal insufficient or invalid. Uh, and there are four uh, deficiencies that if your animal has this deficiency, then your animal is invalid for you to slaughter for udhiya. Uh, the first is al awra That if the animal is clearly blind in one eye, if it only has one eye and it's clearly blind in one eye, or it's blind in both eyes, min babi ola, that if it only has one eye, then the uh, and it's clear, it's clear that it only has one eye, uh, then that animal is not permissible for us to slaughter uh, for the udhiya. Uh, now, mind you, remember that you know just because something is not you know it's not valid to slaughter for udhiya doesn't mean that we can't slaughter it and eat it as just as regular meat. But we're talking about the udhiya because the udhiya is in and of itself an act of worship that we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first uh, deficiency or the first defect is that the animal is one-eyed. Uh, the animal has a, it only has one eye. Uh, the second deficiency, <coughs> excuse me, the second deficiency is al-marad. It is sick, it, and it is clearly slick. It is clearly sick. The animal that is sick, the, and it is clearly sick. Now, mind you, if, 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 you, if you go in to purchase the animal, and you know, the sheep, it, it sneezes, achoo, right? That doesn't mean that the animal is clearly sick. You know, um, now, what does it mean when an animal is clearly sick? I don't know, because I've never seen a sheep that was clearly sick. I'm sure that some of you who are involved with animals, have you ever seen an, an animal that is clearly sick? Uh, that's, what, that's, that's how it is. Like he's off to the side and he's by himself. Sitting down. Oh, okay. So these are, I guess these are the signs that the animal is clearly sick. So the hadith, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions al-marad, al-bayinu marad. That, that, that the, it's, it's sick and it is al marid that this one that is sick and is clearly sick. Not just it has a sickness, but it has a clear sickness. 
the, the third is al-arja the one who is uh, like is it has it, it only has three legs where one of the legs is either cut off or broken one of the legs is, is either cut off uh, or broken if we see that uh, that it is clearly it is clearly broken or is clearly uh, cut off uh, then uh, then that animal is insufficient now mind you you might have an animal that might walk with a limp uh, it, it that's not clear that it's broken uh, you look at that legs it, they're all they're all there they're all present uh, but it, even it might necessarily uh, have a straight walk it's kind of you know iffy that's not what we're discussing we're talking about the animal that has clearly broken his leg or clearly uh, has lost the leg like it was born with only three legs uh, I don't know are there, you, are there animals are there sheep and goats and stuff that, that, that are like that have you seen them that have only three legs they were like born with only three legs yeah well those animals are insufficient that animal uh, is insufficient and the fourth uh, and the fourth def uh, deficiency or defect is al-hazila the one that is extremely skinny, that is clearly skinny. Uh, the animal that when you look at it, 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 it's so skinny that it looks sick. You know, you know some, people, uh, some people are thin, mashallah, and they're thin, and they're slim and trim, and they look healthy. But then there are individuals who are so skinny that they look sick. Like this isn't, uh, that's not, you know, you're not slim and healthy. You are, you're, you're sick. You know, when we can see your bones, right, when you take your shirt off and we can see all your bones and they're clearly defined, right, and you have absolutely no muscle, no meat on you at all, like there, there's, there's an issue. So you look at the animal, the animal is at a point where it's so skinny that it just looks like walking bone and skin. Uh, then this is the animal that uh, is impermissible uh, to, to slaughter. So these are the four defects that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have prohibited. Uh, this, in the, you can find the narration in, 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 the, in the Sunan of Nasa'i and others on the authority of Al-Bara' ibn Azib. You find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has prohibited these four defects. All the other defects that you'll find in the animal, like an animal that has no tail, or animal that, uh, the, ear, the horn, broken horn. Now, mind you, some of the ulama have said that these, the broken horn is makruh. The broken horn is makruh. Uh, but it doesn't render it, uh, uh, is invalid. It doesn't render, so if you find a, a ram, for example, and it only ha it has a piece of the horn uh, broken off, uh, or it's deficient in the horn, that doesn't render it invalid. Uh, however, some of the ulama have, 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 have said that this is something that should be avoided. But what if, for example, you don't, uh, like this, your options are few, right? And you only have the option to have an animal that doesn't have a tail, or the tail has been cut, uh, or the ear, for example, the ear has been cut, is the ulama, some of the ulama have said that this is also should be avoided, but it doesn't render it invalid doesn't render it invalid because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he only rendered invalid the four defects these are the four defects that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said these are uh, it rendered the animal invalid as it relates to the other defects we say should you choose an animal that has teeth say yes then we say yes you should have choose the animal that has the tail but does it render, if you chose the animal where it, it, its ear was clipped for whatever reason, uh, does that make your animal uh, that you slaughtered an invalid udhiya? We say that, it doesn't make it, uh, doesn't make that invalid. Um, the next issue that we want to talk about uh, is that uh, which animals are the best to slaughter? So we have we said we, that we said that the the slaughtered animals that we slaughter 
Fahimat and An'am are, we said, are four categories. The, the button, which is the sheep. Uh, the ma'az, which is the goat. The ibil, which is the camel. And the baqar, which is the, which is the cow. Like, which one should you slaughter? Like which, if you're going for the most virtuous and the one who has the most reward, then which one uh, should you slaughter? The scholars differed about this. Um, and so, for example, some of the ulama, they said that you should slaughter, the most virtuous, the animals to slaughter is the kapsh, or the latin, is the sheep. Why? Because this is with the report, the authentic reports from the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that this is what he slaughtered. This is what he slaughtered. Tayyib. Uh, the majority of the scholars hold the position that the most virtuous of the animals to slaughter is the camel, is then the cow, then the then the sheep, and then the goat, in in in, in that order. And they use as their evidence um, uh, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You can find the Sahih of Al Imam Al Bukhari as well as in the Sahih of Al Imam Muslim, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking about the Jumu'ah, whoever makes the ghusl. Uh, and then he uh, goes to the Jumu'ah, goes to the Masjid for Jumu'ah in the first hour. فَكَأَنَّهُ قَرَّبَ بَدَنَا So it's, it'll be as though he slaughtered a camel. And then whoever goes and attends in the second hour, كَأَنَّمَا قَرَّبَ بَقَرْ And he kept going on like this. In the third hour, as though he slaughtered a, a, a kepsh, a ram. And so the ulama say that show see this shows us that the slaughtering of the camel is more virtuous than the slaughtering of a cow because the Prophet وسلم, he made going to the Jumu'ah or he likened going to the Jumu'ah uh, in the first hour, which is more virtuous. He made that like slaughtering a camel and then going in the second hour, which is a little bit less virtuous. Uh, he made that like slaughtering a cow and then whoever goes in the third hour, it's like he slaughtered a, a ram. So they said that this hadith shows that the slaughtering of the camel is more virtuous than slaughtering of the cow or the slaughtering of the ram or the sheep. Um, Allah Ta'ala knows best. Um, uh, as long as we are slaughtering uh, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us uh, to slaughter, then alhamdulillah we will receive the rewards as far as which is more virtuous. I can see the point in both sides uh, and Allah ta'ala knows best which side is the most correct. Um, we discussed in our, not this, not this Friday, but the previous Friday, we talked about the time for the Udhiyah. The timing for uh, the Udhiyah. <coughs> All of the scholars are in agreement that uh, whoever slaughters before Tulu al Fajr, before the Fajr, on the day of Eid, then that Udhiyah is not Udhiyah. All of the ulama are uh, in agreement. Um, and so they differed after that. They differed into different opinions uh, after that. Uh, but the most correct position in Allah Ta'ala knows best is that it is not permissible to slaughter until after the person prays Salat al -Aid. It is not permissible for a person to slaughter until he's prayed uh, Salat al -Aid. As we mentioned the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man dhabaha qabal al salat فَقَدْ ذَبَحَ بِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ذَبَحَ بَعْدَ الصَّلَاءِ فَقَدْ تَمَّ نُسُخُهُ وَأَصَابَ سُنَّةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He said, alayhi salatu wassalam, whoever has slaughtered before the salah, then he has slaughtered for himself. And whoever has slaughtered after the salah, then he has completed his ritual and he has slaughtered in accordance with the sunnah of the muslimin. So he has to pray Salat al -Aid. And that, that's, I'm saying this is, this, is, this is where the difference of the opinion of the scholars have come in. 
uh, that the uh, so some of the ulama have said that he himself doesn't have to it, it can just be that the timing of the salah itself as long as the timing so for example you know the, the Muslims usually pray for example at 9 o'clock right so once 9 o'clock comes he can go slaughter that is one of the positions of, of the ulama it's just that uh, it just seems as though that the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said man dhabaha qabla salah whoever has uh, slaughtered before the salah then uh, that will be applicable to him as an individual. That if he hasn't prayed the salat, then he has this hadith is applicable to him because he slaughtered before the salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So uh, this issue, the people who miss Salat al-Eid, I believe that uh, this was one of the questions I think Abu Tariq or somebody had asked. I don't remember. Um, but Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to go back to his house and he would pray in his house. He would gather his family and pray in his house. Yeah, he would pray, uh, he would pray Salat al uh in his house. And so this is what a person uh, would do or should do. Now is it wajib upon the person to do that? That's going to be, you know, what the, you know, the difference of opinion as it relates to the hukum of Salat al Eid itself. Is it wajib al al ain Meaning is it wajib for every individual? Uh, or is it, you know, wajib al kifaya? I mean, it's, it's obligatory upon the community, not necessarily obligatory upon the individual. Uh, however, the person should go home. Uh, he can go home and he can pray. He can gather his family and he can pray Salat al Eid uh, in his in his home with his with his family. If he's come out to the Salat, and for example, it was a traffic jam, it was an accident or something like that, and he was prevented from being able to pray with the Muslims, then this is what he would do and Allah Ta'ala knows best. What, if, what about someone who does the wudiyah or the seer and they slaughter before he prays the salah because they're you know, seven to twelve hours ahead? What about in that case? Is this, is this I don't know. I don't know. Number, first of all, I don't, I don't like the idea of slaughtering uh, overseas. I don't like that idea. Not because I believe it's impermissible, but because uh, I believe that there are people here who can benefit uh, from that meat. Like for example, I, right now we have a family who, uh, usually people who show up at the masjid, we have people show up at the masjid looking for money. We have that, people come to the masjid, say please, I'm hungry, that's that. She says, okay, we'll get you some dinner. Like, no, 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 uh, uh, give me the money, right? I thought you said you was hungry. Yeah, I am hungry, but I want you to give me the money so, so I, can, you know, I can buy the food. No, I'll, I'll take you to buy whatever food you want. No, no, just give me the money, right? So we have that. But right now, I know a family right now who has called and did not ask for us for money, said, please, we want food. We need food. We're hungry. We don't have any food. Please, can you give us some food, right? And so... Uh, what if all of us decided to send all of our Udhiyah overseas? Then we have this family who's right now, this is what part, partially, this is what the Udhiyah is for, is so that our poor don't have to be hungry on the Eid. This is a time of the year where the poor people should have so much food that it can last them. They can, they can, they can freeze it because everybody is giving them a little bit of meat and they put that in the freezer and it can last them for a month, two months, three months, uh, like that, and so um, this is why I'd, I, I've, I, I don't necessarily care for the idea of sending our udhiyah overseas, uh, which I'm not saying is haram because Abu Anas is going to tell me the poor people here are different than the poor people over there, and I agree that poverty is not poverty, but it's still poverty. Um, but to answer your question, the answer to your question is I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But I would encourage everyone to please slaughter your animal. I encourage everyone to slaughter their own animal with their own hands. With your own hands. It's a tremendous act of worship. If you've never done it, uh, it's an amazing act of worship. It makes you feel like a believer. Um, and we should distribute, once we have slaughter with our own hands, we should distribute our meat and divide it up and distribute it to our poor people. Uh, this is what I encourage people to do. But if someone has done something different, and they have sent their meat or have, have made tawkeel, have asked someone overseas to slaughter uh, on their behalf, 
Uh, then the answer to your question is, I don't know. Uh, the next issue we're going to talk about, inshallah, is what do we do with the meat? And I think we talked about this, uh, we, we made an ishara uh, in the khutbah uh, last week, uh, where the, there are three things that the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he advised when well, he was questioned about what do we do with the meat. Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, he said, kulu wa at'imu wa dakhiru. Kulu wa at'imu wa dakhiru. Eat, feed, and save. And so the animal that you slaughter, these are the three things that you're encouraged to do. It's not wajib for you to do, but you're encouraged to do. Uh, encouraged to eat from it. You're encouraged to feed others from it. And you're encouraged to save some. Now, if you wanted to give it all away, that's also permissible. Uh, it is not... Uh, it is not what the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to do. However, if a person decided that this is what they're going to do, uh, then he can also do that. So for example, a person may not necessarily like goat. right? If you're like myself and you know, us as Americans, uh, goat is not something that is, is, is prime uh, or regular uh, in, in our diet, except for Abdul Hadi. <laughs> but if you, go, if, you go to the, if you go to the Publix, Right, if you go across the street to the Publix or to the Walmart uh, and just look at the meat section, you'll find that there's a huge pork section, there's a huge chicken section, there's a huge uh, beef section, but the goat section is it's really small. Right, it's really small. Like you might find some 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 lamb, you know, some lamb ribs, maybe a couple of lamb steaks or something like that. But it's not huge like the beef section or the chicken section or the pork section. Why? Because here and where we live at, this is, you know, goat and sheep is not necessarily the, you know, what people eat. Now, when I was in Medina, the role was, was flipped. It was hard for me to find beef. It was hard for me to find a steak or ground beef. You had to actually go out to, like, you had to find a butcher, you know, which is kind of far, and you had to, like, you know, there's something, that, and it was kind of expensive. Uh, but, you know, lamb... And goat was everywhere because this is what people eat. And so, uh, so for example, if I wanted, uh, if I slaughtered a goat because let's say this, this was the, what I could afford, so I slaughtered the goat, but I don't eat goat, then I may decide to just give it all away uh, to the poor and to the, and to the needy, <coughs> which would be permissible. Huh? You said slaughter a goat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I asked Abu Tariq, let's go, let's go, come on, let's get seven people on a cow. He said, no, we, we're not doing that this year. Oh, Allah al-Mustan. Uh, khair. So we said, what do we do with the, with the meat? We, we, we eat from it, we feed, and we save. Kulu wa at'imu wa dakhiru. We eat from it, meaning that day. We eat from it, meaning that, that day the food that we eat will be from uh, from the slaughter. We take it, we, we slaughter it, we cut it up, we put some on the grill, we grill it, and we serve ourselves and our families. And then we take some of the meat and we put it in a nice packaging. Please don't, don't, don't just take it, don't, don't just put the meat and just throw it into some, like a, 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 a Walmart bag with all the blood and everywhere and just, you know, go to the poor people and hand them something where the bag is all sticky from you know, it has, has goat blood juice all over the bag. And we say, here, we're giving you sadaqah. Say, La, don't do that. Don't, don't treat people like that. You know, we should treat them with some dignity and with some respect by at least, you know, put it in some nice packaging, you know, something that's clean. You know, some, you know we're not just tossing them uh, our trash. You know, we're not cutting up the animal and then giving all the pieces. Say, oh, oh, oh this is the good piece. This is the ketif. I want to keep this for myself. Yeah, we're going to save the steak for us. And then we give them the pieces of meat which is just bone. Right? It's just bone and cartilage. Say, so here, this, we're giving you sadaqah. Don't do that. Give, you know, treat them with some honor and some respect and give them something that you know, they, they can benefit from. Uh, just because a person is poor doesn't mean that they have no dignity and no honor. You know, it doesn't mean that they should be disrespected. Uh, and so, and I have seen people, uh, you know, because they come, they've come... I've been, you know, some years ago, not necessarily, I'm not talking about here, in the past, uh, people have come to my house 
and, and they put the meat and just left it on my front door, right? And I didn't even know that it was there, so it's sitting out in the heat, right? It's sitting out in the heat, now it's smelly, right? So we come home and we're like, what's, what's that smell? And, you know, it's meat, you know, it's been sitting out in front of my door all day. Uh, you know, don't, don't, we shouldn't do that. We, we, should, we should have a little bit more respect for the Muslims than that. <laughs> yeah, but you, 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 I don't know if, you, if someone has done, you know, put, hung a bag of meat on your front door and left. I've, I've, I've been home. I was, I, I've had, there were times when I was home when someone come to my house, they, obviously they put it on the door and they left. They didn't even ring the doorbell. No, I'm talking about here in America. I'm talking here in America. Uh, you know, someone put the bag, and I had, and I'm talking about the Walmart bag because I've had that happen as well, where you, I go to pick up the bag, and it's all like, I can't even touch it. I got to go get some gloves because it's all sticky. Like, oh, who wants that? You know, you open. <laughs> you know, we, 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 shouldn't, um, we shouldn't treat the poor like this. We shouldn't treat the poor like they have no dignity, like they, they should just be happy with whatever we give them. You know, they're, you know not, people are poor. Now, I agree sometimes people are poor because of their own decisions. I agree. However, that's not the case for everybody. Sometimes people have circumstances where they just had a bad situation that they couldn't, you know, uh, they had a bad year or a bad couple of years, so now they're in a jam and their situation, they just, they're fighting to get out of it and, and, and so that it doesn't mean that they are not smart or they don't, you know, they don't deserve honor or respect. We should still respect them. Uh, and at least if we're going to give them something, you know, put it in a nice packaging. You know, put it in a nice packaging. If you don't want someone to know that you've given them, you know, sadaqa, for example, you want to keep your identity hidden, just ask someone else to go over there. Say, hey, Abu Anas, listen, can you get, go over to such and such a house and give this? Don't tell them I, it was me. Just, you know, can you do that for me? Say, okay, I'll do that. You know, don't just, you know, uh, put, hang the meat on the door and just go running. What do we do not do? What do we don't do with the udhiyah? What we don't do, what's impermissible to do, is sell it. It is not permissible to sell that meat. Any part of it. It is not permissible to sell any part of it. Uh, and the and the and the ujra of the shismu of the jiz, um, the butcher uh, is not to come from the udhiya. It's to come from any any source outside of that. The the butcher has to get paid. We pay him, right? We pay him for his services. To, to cut up, to, 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 to skin the animal, to cut it up into pieces, cut, you know, cut the meats and things like that. We have to pay him for that, 15 20 30 50 dollars or whatever. But we don't give him his payment in meat from the animal. That's, it was not, that's not permissible. As Ali, radiallahu anhu, uh, there's, an, there's a hadith on this, there's a hadith of the prohibition that, that, that hadith is laif. That hadith is laif. And, but what we use is the narration from Ali, radiallahu anhu, where he mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, uh, he, he sent him to do the slaughter and he, and he prohibited him from paying the, uh, the butcher from, from the meat, to, to pay him from the meat. And the ulama extract from this that it is not permissible to utilize that meat as a source of money uh, because that udhiya is in of itself an act of worship, is, is taqarrub ila Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we cannot use an animal that we've slaughtered for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a source of income. So we can't say, okay, uh, I slaughtered the animal, I paid $300 for it, I'm going to cut it in half, slice it up, cut it up nice and neat, package it, and then I'm going to resell it, and I'm going to get my money back. That. This, you know, this, this old hiya is an act of worship that we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and it should... Uh, remain uh, as such. Uh, the last, the last thing uh, is what happens when uh, a person purchases an animal. For he goes early to the farm <coughs> and he purchases a sheep or a goat and he brings it home. 
right? He ties it up, and the and and, and while he's waiting for the Eid, the animal chews off the rope and runs away. Now what? Is he obligated now to go and purchase another animal? Does he have to go and purchase another animal? Uh, this question uh, was asked to Ibn Abbas, anhu an abihi, and this is reported in the, the Sunan al-Kubra by al-Bayhaqi, where Ibn Abbas was asked the same question, what happens if I lose my animal? And Ibn Abbas anhu said, la yaduruk that it is not, uh, it won't harm you, meaning it's okay. Uh, you do not uh, have to go and purchase another animal. Your slaughter and the reward is sufficient. Uh, you'll be rewarded uh, because this is something that is beyond uh, your control. So Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he said, la yadurruk. Uh, inshallah, it's time for the adhan. We'll call the adhan and then we'll take uh, questions afterwards, inshallah. One of the things that we didn't mention, we'll mention it really quick, inshallah, is the makan. Where, where, where is it permissible for the person to slaughter? Uh, as it relates to the hukum or the ruling, it's permissible for a person to slaughter anywhere. If a person wanted to slaughter in his home, he could do so. If he wanted to go uh, elsewhere, he can do so. Uh, however, I do uh, highly, highly encourage that each and every one of us follows the local laws. There are local laws that prevent us from slaughtering animals in uh, particular places. I don't really have the knowledge of what those laws are, uh, but from what I remember in, in, the diff in different places, I don't know about here in Osceola County, there were other places that I lived at where it was not, uh, uh, if, if you lived inside of city limits, then you were not allowed to, uh, to slaughter an animal. Outside of city limits, uh, then you were allowed to slaughter an animal inside of city limits. You couldn't slaughter the animal. I don't know if that's the case here uh, in Kissimmee, uh, but I advise each and every one of us to make sure that, you know, if we live in a subdivision, <coughs> if you live in a subdivision like I do, uh, don't just go home and have your, have your little goat tied, to a, you know, tied up in your backyard, and then you just go and, Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and you, you know, and you slaughter your... your your goat in the backyard, and your neighbors can see you out of their living room. They're sitting in the living room, <laughs> and they're watching you. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, not because it's haram or impermissible, uh, but because this, you know, you, we can get ourselves in trouble uh, with the local authorities. And there are countries that complain that they cannot slaughter, that the government has set up a system where they cannot slaughter. It's, they can, it's not even a place they can go. Like, it's illegal uh, for them to slaughter. Certain places in Europe, huh? Europe. Yeah, certain places in Europe, they, it's illegal for them to slaughter. This whole act of worship is something that they cannot do. And so we don't want to, uh, we don't want to put ourselves in a situation 
where the government feels like the only way that they can control us is by making a law and making it illegal for us. The reason why I'm saying that is because I know, uh, actually I was present uh, at when a brother, he had his goat tied up in his backyard and after the salat we came, we went back to his house and he actually slaughtered right there in his backyard. He hung up the, his little goat on the back, on the fence and he, 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 he skinned it and cut it up right there in his backyard. Uh, I'm saying don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Because it can, it, eventually it can have some negative consequences uh, for the Muslims. Now, anybody have any questions? What if you find the boat on the runway after like three, after four days? After three what do you mean, if, if it runs away? Huh? Like the boat that ran away. Huh? Is it within the is it within the time for? Oh, also, it's like later on in the Hijjah, like the twenty. That you know, هذه سنة فاتت That it's 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 done. It's over. Right, it's past this time. Then the slaughter is over, and but and you still be rewarded. Uh, you can and you can still slaughter it, and you can still you eat it, but it's not. You've already been rewarded for for the Uthiyah itself. No. No. Mm -hmm. So they never intended this would be a slaughtering is after worship. They intend for the meat. Uh, for those, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said in the hadith that we all know, "Inna al amalu bin niyat." Actions are based upon intentions. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also said about the people in the day of judgment, "Yubathu uh, nasu ala niyatihim." The people will be resurrected based upon their intentions. And so if a person is slaughtering for the purpose of meat, then that's what he shall have. And any person is going to have what he intended. So if he intends from his purchase of the udhiya, that really all he's, he wants, it's, it's meat. It's not, uh, it's not that he wants to do an act of worship. You know, he's not trying to obey Allah and obey the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He just wants a nice, you know, piece of, uh, you know, lamb chops and he wants some, some lamb ribs. You know, this is all that he wants from it. Then, shatuhu uh, shatu lahm. That his, his, his slaughter is just a slaughter of meat because that's what he intended. May Allah Ta'ala help us and guide us. Uh, this is the last one because we're going to have to pray, inshallah. Tawadda. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said in the authentic hadith That people are four categories He said the first person Is the person whom Allah Has given uh, knowledge and wealth And he spends his wealth In a way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Is pleased with He said the second person Is the person that Allah gave knowledge but did not give any wealth. And he says, had I had wealth, then I would spend it like so and so. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Huma fil ajri sawa. Then those two are the same uh, as it relates to their reward. And so when a person has a complete conviction, we're not talking about someone who's just sitting around daydreaming, but a person who has full intention, that I'm going to do such and such, I'm going to do this act of worship, and he sets out and he tries to accomplish it. But the only thing that stands in his way is the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal has, has decreed that he's not going to be able to do so. In those cases, that person uh, is going to uh, receive the reward. Uh, he's going to receive uh, the reward of that. Now, so inshallah ta'ala, we'll, 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 we'll stop now because of the salah. Uh, remember, please, um, we're going to have class on Sunday. We're going to have class on Sunday, our theater class. And... We're going to stop there, and then we will suspend the classes until further notice after that. On Friday, next Friday, inshallah, we'll, we'll announce uh, when we'll be resuming uh, the classes, inshallah. So we'll have class this Sunday, but Tuesday, our Tuesday class is canceled, and then on Friday, we're going to announce when the classes will resume, inshallah. 
هذا والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد